to go out there and inform us as to what will happen, but at the same time, those who are here, or the other group, will stop the propaganda that we know has existed here, and in Germany, and in the States, and in Australia, and so on. I did not see anything in there. Is there anything in your study that you may have seen that will make us understand that there is an effort to pacify us and maybe them? Well, it, it, it does. Well, the agreement says that there sh that the government should stop kind of these irredentist movements um, wherever they are. So that, but but again, it, it says that they should. Again, we don't know what does that mean, right? Um, but that was one of the major flaws here is that the people weren't consulted, right? So if the government really wanted the people's opinions, it would do what you said, right? It would set up consultations, um, reviews. But you know, politically, you know, sometimes it's difficult, right? Um, and you know. Sometimes you know governments try to make decisions, um, and then people are left like how everyone here feels, right? That the government is working against you. They don't care about what you're saying. Uh, well, there's resentment. A dispute resolution clause of any kind. So if they disagree, in terms of oh, like if there's a disagreement. Yeah, yeah that there is one. Um, yeah, it does say uh, that basically if there's a disagreement. Let me see if I can find it. Is it a majority? Yeah, yeah. So it says, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, I know it talks about the United Nations and it talks about... Uh, it says that basically if you, if you have an issue, you bring it up to the other party. And, and then you let them know so that there's an issue. Yeah, that's, that's what it says. That if you, if you have an issue that you bring it forth to the other party and then they... Um, <laughs> Say, how with you? We're going to do this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who solves the problem? United Nations? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. It kind of, yeah. Um, because you need to have a mechanism to solve the problem. Yeah, that, that's one of the things, yeah. Um, but it says you basically raise your issues with the other side. Let me see if I can find it. It's actually here. Each party commits to respect something. It, it, it does mention at one point, but the United Nations. It's the last sentence. Uh, yeah, so yeah, they have to be these sentences like in various places where it says that they should communicate without delay to the other party any information of this regarding. So it's just basically bring it to the attention of the other side, and then they'll discuss it. Um, I'm not sure, like, if there, what kind of mediation the UN or the EU can have in an agreement like this. Um, Chris Miro probably has more, more, more information on that. Um, but, like, I, I'm not a politician or political scientist. But from what the document says, I'm not sure that there's that there is kind of an institute that will govern it. And it's kind of like um, with the NAFTA agreements, right, with Canada. How they wanted uh, a, a place for, uh, for kind of a, a council that will. And we got it. Yeah, and we got it. Yeah, so yeah, so I, I didn't see anything like that here. Um, it's. Second here that you may not, if you study this case, Pan Macedonian or was it Jesus the president of Saloniko followed by Jesus the world, Pan Macedonian? They should the minister of. Which you could just for the decision to be to sign this agreement. Do you know anything to tell us about this? If the who should sign it? The, the Pan Macedonian organization. The oh, like if they if they, they, should, if they, if they should the approve it? The court accepted the, the case and will be charged, or they will have a court case. There is there there is a section here that you could um. Do you know anything about it? There is a section where they, they said that disagreements can be brought forth to. Um, I'm not sure there there's a there there is there is a. a court. Yeah yeah. I don't know if you yeah. But the thing is, if 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 the country is within the European Union, 
and within NATO, there are mechanisms within those institutions that can deal with conflicts. Because they went to Europe, so they Yeah, exactly, yeah. So because they were members, they could kind of, um, they could go to those. So there are mechanisms in international institutions, like the UN, like the EU, like NATO, that you can bring things like that. So, you know, Greece, Greece does this with NATO all the time, with, with Turkey, when, they, when, when their jets come over, right? Um, they raise these issues, and um, so there are mechanisms in those institutions. Um, there's also the, the International Court of Justice. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So there's stuff like that. That applies. But it may. yeah. So there, yeah, there are those institutions where you, you can go. Mr. Zikas, you had your head up. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Professor, I'm I'm grateful for the uh, history lesson, and it's it, it's very important that we know what the background is. However, I'm more interested in knowing right now if you can shed some light on why the Tsipras government wants to ratify this agreement. It seems to me odd that in a country where a recent poll showed that 75% of the people don't agree with it, and at least 65% want their own uh, their own discussion of and, and, and independent examination of this uh, within Greece itself. In, in effect, a referendum within Greece itself. Given those statistics, why is Tsipras so adamant about going through with it? Well, I can't really answer that. I'm outside the loop. But <laughs> this, is a, yeah. no problem. Uh, this analysis, we have to remember, is a historical analysis leading up to this, coming from a historical perspective, not a political one. Um, but before we finish up today, I'll, I'll let you know where you can get a political analysis of this uh, in the next 24 hours. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm not in the, the political no, and there are obviously external issues involved here, and, and more kind of on the political level. Um, um, just sorry, Spiro, and then Mr. Gregor. Hi, my name is Spiro. Spiro Um Thank you for your presentation. Thanks for the microphone. Just so everyone can hear. Thank you for your presentation. Did you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was very important. And uh, you also pointed out that there are flaws in the agreement. And, and you discussed that. Uh, you, you also made reference to uh, mediation points that can, uh, that can uh, facilitate resolution of arguments. Mm -hmm. The main issue with most of us is that the name has been handed over. It's not the details in the agreement. Mm -hmm. And that's what the focus ought to be. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have no concern whatsoever with the agreement because the agreement is oh, no, unacceptable. No. Mm -hmm. And the North, some people obviously do. Mm -hmm. Some people are concerned about the agreement. So they're fine with giving, with giving Bulgarians and gypsies the name of Macedonia. They are, they're comfortable with that. Enough Greeks are, obviously. But, and, and you may, so my question is, why is it that we are not focusing on the issue, which is giving away the name of Macedonia, and we are dealing, we are being sidetracked with the agreement. The agreement is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. There should be no name given away, and it's not being sold out as, as, as was described, it was just given away. So my question is, why are we focusing on the details and not saying a word about the fact that the name is given away? So yeah. that's my question, why are we not? We are here. Well, yeah, well the protests in Greece basically. We are here for an hour. Yeah, and, and the protests and in Greece showed that, right, that people are upset about that, right? And the protests here have, have signified that as well. But that's, that's the issue. But, the issue yeah, is but, that yeah. Like I said earlier, this is a historical but we saw, But you can see from kind of the presentation where the name issue came and how it was slowly given away throughout history from either different administrations or different conflicts and how it's come to this point, right? Well, I um, appreciate the fact that you're a historian. To me, history is exciting. Extremely, yeah. my 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 view. But at the same time, I do, as a historian, aware that the majority of Greeks do not know and do not care about history, and yeah. neither do the majority of 
Okay. How are you aware of that? Well, there's throughout history that many Greeks and Greek governments didn't care about Macedonia. That they let it go. They wouldn't mind if Bulgaria took it. So <laughs> it's happened in the past. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, so the governments have let down the people of the war um, throughout history. Mr. Uh, Yakobolos, we'll take one more and then we have some, some wine and some snacks to have after once we close off. I don't think you need the microphone. <laughs> I disagree totally with uh, Spiro. This is not our point tonight. And I disagree with all the presentation. I believe that it was uh, totally insufficient, the presentation for the agreement. The presentation today, the theme was the BRESPA agreement. We shouldn't talk about 1878 or beginning of uh, the 20th century or uh, even in the um, uh, uh, war years. Okay, we should have focused exactly from Article 1 to Article 20 about this uh, impious agreement. And there are so many things in there that we should get. If I start talking, I, will, I want to, to do a presentation in Greek, not tonight. There, there is going to be tonight. one of okay? you some guys that I want to okay. have the opportunity to do that. But on, the only thing I want to ask is, for Article 1, um, paragraph 4, I didn't see there the Z. No, you, you don't even have oh, it there. Zeta oh. in Greek. Okay. Yeah. Do you think or anybody thinks that this agreement has to be certified by the Greek government or the Hellenic government? Nothing about it. No. What Everybody do you think? Says no doesn't you matter what this. I think. You read this, right? Uh, yeah. You're, okay. Does it say anything here that this agreement has to be certified? Because it does say there clearly mm -hmm. about the Skopian government, about the referendum, and changing the uh, constitution. Mm -hmm. But does Greece or Elas has to pass it? Is that what you're asking? Does the Greek government have to pass it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, we can't just, it will be an agreement. You assume. Well, you can't have an agreement. You assume. Okay. I'm not a politician. In this agreement, there is nothing at all, nothing at all saying that Greece, in, in agreements, you cannot assume nothing. Whatever it is written here, that's exactly for the word that it will be agreed upon. Nothing else, not a single word. Okay, so if you go there on the set, on the seat actually, pay attention please. You're good. Pay attention please. It says F in the English. Uh, it says upon notification by the second party, second party is the Scotia, of the completion of the ab above mentioned constitutional amendments and of all its internal legal procedures for the entry into force of this agreement, the first party, the idiots, in other words, the suckers, us, okay, that's exactly what it says. Not us. The first party government, not should us. promptly ratify this agreement. Στο ελληνικό το κείμενο, χωρίς καθυστέρηση, λέει. Το καταλαβαίνετε, do you understand that? And also, if you go with the last one, Clearly, we can, we, we can, I think t tomorrow you're going to have a yes. more discussion. Yeah, but then tonight we should talk. It says the yeah. Prespa agreement. That, that was the, the, the theme tonight. Okay. On the last one, number nine, it says clearly the provision of this agreement shall remain in force for the indemnified period.